Welcome back to another weather forecast here by Adrian, and this is going to be uh, my first of your weather forecast in, in, in a while we're here. And as we go throughout March and obviously throughout April, we're going to be continuing to watch out the severe weather season to amplify as we continue. And this is exactly what we're going to be seeing for at least the next seven days. We are watching out for significant severe weather, almost almost all of those and we did have a day 8, 15% yesterday, which is now day 7. So we have a day 6 and day 7 threat, as well we do have a day 2 threat. Obviously, today's threat, day 3 threat, and as well a day 4 threat. So we have a lot to talk about with this upcoming uh, very active severe weather uh, pattern for the South Central Gulf Coast and as well portioned across Dixie Alley. So we're going to be going through all of that. We're going to be specifically diving into Mars forecast and as well day three and then briefing over day six and day seven. But with that further ado, let's get in the forecast. So this is the severe weather outlook for tomorrow's severe weather event. So I'm not going to be really going over today necessarily. And it's just going to be a little risk across Georgia and Florida. Just a little hail threat and nothing too crazy necessarily. Maybe a few uh, water spouts, but we're not looking at anything really necessarily that catch that's going to catch my attention for today. But we're going to be watching out for a uh, decent tornado threat tomorrow along the Gulf Coast overnight into early Friday morning as well. We are we are watching out a pretty widespread wind and hail threat for tomorrow. We do have a slight risk from South Central Oklahoma and the DFW area all the way towards New Orleans and the Gulf Coast and the mouth of the river, Mississippi River in Louisiana. The slight risk is included around almost 12 million people. Uh, and this is where we're really watching out for a, a slight risk all, driven by all three factors, but not necessarily in all the same uh, same outline. For example, the tornado threat is going to specifically stay towards the Gulf Coast. Well, that's going to be seeing more instability. That's going to be seeing overall just better orientation between uh, the boundary and the overall surface wind. This is going to be a lot better of a tornado uh, as an environment uh, with a lot more instability, a lot mixed layer cape, uh, just a lot better dew points as well. So it's going to be a lot better along the New Orleans area and Baton Rouge area and that general, that general area along the Gulf Coast for some tornadoes. Notice how the other areas in the slide rates aren't necessarily, necessarily, aren't necessarily in that. So again, this 5%, we're going to be watching out for some brief tornadoes. Um, Again, as well, a 2%, not really much bigger than that. So there's kind of spe specific areas right on the Gulf Coast for that tornado threat. So that's when we're really watching out for the uh, really early, early morning hours on Friday. But the uh, threat for Thursday and will be the wind threat and the hail threat. So there's that wind threat. So it's going to kind of be a little bit weird of a shift specifically across kind of the too far end of the slight risk. And... It's kind of a weird wind risk to see that we have a gap between Louisiana and Texas. About 15% across Oklahoma and Texas. And then, of course, uh, the southeast Louisiana area into Mississippi. So this is going to be the main area to really watch out for all three factors. Early, early morning on Friday. So definitely watching out uh, to keep your, um, really, I say, plans uh, when you go on Thursday night into morning hours of Friday if you are in the Gulf Coast because that's where we're going to be seeing our general uh jackpot time frame there's a wind threat or the hail threat sorry so we're gonna be seeing pretty favorable uh atmosphere for a hail considering we're gonna be seeing a lot of dry line convection specifically in texas not oklahoma and now with the overall kind of rapid cooling as well with some um drier air in the mid levels we're gonna be seeing some pretty good hail conditions across louisiana mississippi if we could just go through a brief um just a brief summary we're gonna be watching out for uh, see steepening mid-level lapse rates, modesty stabilization will really just allow for some pretty good nuclear cape and instability. So we could be seeing some hail as well. Can be seeing some high base and elevated above low level inversion. So can be seeing um pretty much uh, not a huge tornado threat when it comes to Oklahoma and Texas. It can be mainly elevated and high base cells, and then we'll be watching out vertical shear and steep mid-level lapse rates should support isolated large hail in the vicinity. Of the surface lows, and that's kind of why we have that kind of sh weird, that weird shade to almost all all these risks because of the, the overall kind of sharp difference between the conditions uh, that will support certain areas. As well, we're gonna be watching out for um, a narrow corridor of near surface base convection may exist across north central Texas and to south central Oklahoma with higher quality, a little moisture will overlap with strong ascent near the surface low slash cold front, isolated damaging gusts. 
So that's why also this wind threat's gonna be pretty much very isolated. Um because we're not gonna necessarily be seeing um much I, I wouldn't say we're not gonna be seeing much level of moisture, so the winds will be isolated in certain areas. So tomorrow doesn't really necessarily have too much of a concern, but definitely watching out for the overnight threat. And as we go towards day three, here's a day three risk again. This will obviously be like the day after. So we are still gonna be watching out a threat for um the Gulf Coast could so continue to watch out those early morning hour tornadoes across Louisiana, Mississippi, and then eventually it will mature over land across Alabama and southwest Georgia and as well a portion of the western panhandle. Uh, so we have a slight risk from basically the Gulf Coast towards southwest Georgia with a pretty widespread marginal. So really watching out for, if we just look at the central Gulf Coast region, we're going to be watching out for a larger cool side of a, a weak Gulf warm front moving gradually northward ahead of the approaching upper trough. Uh, basically, we're going to be seeing uh, most storms are going to be remaining elevated, very strong flow, veering and increasing with height. will support rotating updrafts, great severe risk, including potential for a couple of tornadoes, will exist on the southern fringe of the eastward moving convection, largely during the morning and early afternoon hours. So you're really, really going to be watching after the main, the, as I said, the main tornado threat on for Friday will be in the early, early morning hours. And let's now get into the very interesting days. And again, we're not going to be getting into this until much in the very end of the video since it's so far out. But we do have, we did have a day 8, 15%, which is now a day 7, 15%. We have a day 6, 15%, and a day 4, 15%. So 15% for the, kind of the, the Carolina. So that's going to be carrying on from day 2, then to day 3, then to day 4. Um, and then the day, the day four threat is going to be watching out basically for um, some included, included low over the Indiana and Ohio vicinity. And it's going to just allow for some storms and even damaging winds offshore given strong lower and mid tropospheric flow. So going to be looking mainly at a wind threat for that one. And then day five, nothing. Day six is where it gets interesting. On day six, we do have a pretty, I say, pretty... Uh, a, a pretty significant looking severe weather setup that is being picked up on the models here. Day 15%. And as we continue, the further we actually go in the days, the I say the stronger the wording gets. Day 15 uh, or 15% on day 6 for much of the eastern Texas corridor, Carolina, uh, portions of the tech, um, Texas and Oklahoma border, southwest Arkansas, and western Louisiana. I don't know why I was going to hit the Carolinas, but... It's going to include some pretty big cities like Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Houston. So definitely a pretty uh, eye-opener. So here's on the look of the day six. We're going to be watching out for a um, developing cold front, which is forecasted to come from the western half of Texas. Looking at strong southeasterly low-level flow. So that's going to be a pretty, uh, a pretty good thing that we're looking at pretty far out already. Will affect moist Gulf air mass into Texas, contributing to afternoon destabilization. Meanwhile, there's strong 100 plus knot southwesterly mid level jet associated with the upper level uh, system. Overspread is south, so southern plains. We're going to be watching out for favorable, super, favorable for supercells uh, as well. Convection develops near and ahead of the cold front, uh, looking at probably intense to severe storms, including potential for very large hail and tornadoes as expected. So, pretty strong wording here. If we go to day seven. There's your kind of day after across Dixie Alley now and portions of the uh, Mississippi River Basin. So again, pretty strong wording so considering day seven. Looking at probably um, another uh, all hazard severe weather episode is expected, including potential for supercell slash tornadoes from East Texas eastward into the Lower Mississippi River Valley. So gonna definitely be seeing a pretty uh, strong signal pretty far out for those upcoming days. Now let's go ahead and look at the NAM and look at the overall brief setup for the next few days considering we're looking at really day two and day three mainly on, on the NAM run here. We're not going to be looking at obviously can't go in range on day six, day seven, not day four just yet. But there is the overall pattern we're looking at kind of break basically right now. Or this isn't right now, obviously this is the 18Z run, but this is kind of the overall setup you're going to be seeing if you were to look right now. You're going to be seeing kind of your, um, your Baja California upper level low right here that's going to be i guess you could say the parent trough and then you have like a kind of northerly flow as well like a second weaker trough um which is dipping pretty far south into, into idaho so there you have kind of these two troughs here that are both basically 
mainly the Baja one's kind of towards neutral and kind of this one towards the northwest Pacific Northwest is kind of slightly positive tilted but this is gonna be basically now and there's your set for today that um, pretty neutral upper level trough closed trough pretty nice two barrel uh, system but as you now go towards basically tomorrow early early morning basically tonight there's your Baja low system it's gonna be amplifying because you're gonna be seeing a ridge up during the Pacific the Pacific, so it's going to kind of amplify that uh, kind of that trough that kind of that in the back side of the trough is going to really amplify that flow. So, you're going to be seeing basically, if we look at it, it basically be seeing around 70 close to 70 knots here already. But there's kind of starting to make become a lot more neutral. And there's your second northerly flow again, it's going to start kind of attaching itself. So, with this really strong ridge, it could kind of allow for this um, this northerly flow to kind of start to interact with that parent trough so as long as that parent trough uh advex pretty slow we'll be seeing kind of an interaction as well even a connection uh within the two troughs which will actually help this amplify negative tilted right before the event so by tomorrow 18z there's your uh kind of there's your low right there on t and the panhandle texas you're gonna be seeing your cold front kind of attached and then your dry line just ahead of it there's your trough. It's basically at this point negatively tilted slightly as the two troughs emerged. Uh, you're going to be seeing this start to kind of this trough now swing. And it's a pretty amplified trough. You're going to be seeing around 83 knots here at 500 millibars. And there's your southwesterly flow going straight to the north. So you're going to be seeing some pretty strong southwesterly flow. So there's your southwesterly flow and then your 850 millibar is going to be pretty pretty much similar so that's why we're not going to be seeing a huge tornado threat but once we go towards kind of louisiana it'll be a little bit different but now by zero by three z there you see this trough continues to now make its way the kind of the um right uh left end the left uh entrance you're going to be seeing basically towards the Texarkana area and getting towards arkansas louisiana you're going to start seeing as well some severe weather developing there however again a lot of it's going to be and not necessarily extremely favorable environment. It's going to be mainly a big wind threat. We're not big wind threat, but a, a, a slight risk, obviously, for driven by wind across the majority of this Texas and Oklahoma area. As well, going to be seeing some hail with uh, the dry line advection and the elevated supercells aligned for some pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good wind and as well hail threat. But as we now go towards around 9Z and then 12Z for Louisiana in the early morning hours of Friday. That's going to start seeing that severe weather really amplifying as kind of that, uh, I'd say the climax or the, the rage, or the rage or like the really main part or the strongest part of that trough is going to start to make its way into Louisiana. So you're going to start seeing uh, some tornado threats here again. That's going to be towards kind of the 12Z time frame uh, in the southeast Louisiana. You're going to be start seeing with that really good EML and as well uh, with uh, some decent um mid-level uh dry, dry mid-level lab you're gonna be seeing some uh, some hail across this area but the main hail thrives say the the big hailers will will remain across texas and oklahoma where that dry line is gonna be obviously uh but yeah by by basically the over the early early morning hours this trough's gonna be pretty amplified around 80 knots maybe 80 87 maybe 90 in some parts so you are gonna be seeing some pretty widespread severe weather threats across the mississippi area and louisiana area but the tornado threat will remain pretty isolated and we'll get a little bit more closer into that as we could as we get later in the video but then it starts to kind of broaden out this trough you don't really have a really strong ridge to amplify the amplitude of kind of that left entrance towards the kind of the exit of the trough so it's gonna be a pretty weak axis and at this point it's gonna be really it's still going to be negatively tilted, but at this point, actually, it's going to be kind of more towards tilting towards at this point. Really, just a really weak trough. So, that's why on day four, we'll be just seeing more of a wind threat in the Carolinas because you don't have any really good orientation or any really good, um, really strong moisture being lifted up from this trough because it's really not to amplify. It's at this point pretty, pretty much like a really just zonal, just kind of just going straight like this instead of any amplitude towards that trough you don't have any really good shape towards it so that's why day four is going to be mainly probably a uh more of a wind threat at least slight slight uh wind threat driven at least for the 50 percent as of now however again models will change and they 
obviously. Um, again, models will change, but looks like day four is going to be not the uh, most interesting day out of the day four through eight, obviously. Let's now go ahead and get a look at the NAM uh, now 850 millibar flow, and this is going to give us a better idea of the overall kind of orientation between the levels of the atmosphere to see exactly what's going to be favored discrete mode or a um or kind of a linear mode and you, you are going to be seeing pretty much a discrete mode favored but it's going to be more of a elevated based you're not going to be seeing your lcl super low here so you are going to be seeing rotating updrafts but they're so elevated that you're not going to be seeing really tornadoes uh in any environment with any strong catalysticity with any strong um forcing to really allow for a tornado to really be expected tomorrow across texas and oklahoma but there's your uh 800 millibar so it's kind of going due south coming from, straight from the south so there if you kind of add that up from the southwesterly motion from 500 millibars you're probably gonna be seeing kind of a like this orientation something like that so it is a discrete orientation however again it's elevated but you do have some pretty good 850 millibar at uh, around basically just outside that little cycle and you're gonna be seeing around 45 maybe 50 knots at 850, 850 millibars but as we go towards the overnight hours in louisiana mississippi and the gulf coast that's going to really amplify as this um this is, is going to be an amplifying mid uh mid-level cyclone so you are going to be seeing a pretty strong 850 millibar flow uh, we're talking about maybe 60 knots, 850 millibars across the kind of uh, Monroe area and as well across the um, kind of the border between Mississippi and Arkansas and Louisiana. But if you go towards the other kind of the main tornado risk down here towards Grand Isle, for example, you're going to be seeing more towards around 40 knots. Again, we are going to be seeing some cap considering the time frame. However, again, if we do have decent amount of instability, we could get a few tornadoes uh, within a short time period. So it's not going to be kind of like you know, hours and hours and hours threat towards the overnight hours. It's going to be kind of just a specific and small time frame to get your instability and maybe a few elevated supercells. But I'm not too concerned about tomorrow's tornado threat. But again, as we, as we get closer towards the... Uh, now, go deeper in the video, we'll get a better uh, look at the threat for tomorrow. This is exactly what we're going to do right now. So if we look at the overall... Dew point for tomorrow, guys. We are gonna be seeing a dry line. So there's. Let's go towards tomorrow at around 21Z. There you can kind of see the overall dry line is gonna be kind of in place right here. You can see how there is a sharp difference between the dew points, but not necessarily a change in the um, wind vectors. So this is gonna be your cold front kind of back here. That's gonna be your mm -hmm. cold front. Actually, your mm -hmm. cold front is gonna be kind of more towards here. It's gonna be your cold front. There's your dry line right here. So we are gonna be seeing some dry line advection. And that's why we we are watching out for these more bigger threats for like wind and and hail. So we're not going to be seeing any impressive dew points yet coming uh to towards this general risk until the 850 millibar and the 500 millibar finally kind of towards a, in another way kind of basically connects and I guess you could say overlap. So once they overlap, that's when we we'll start to get that strong moisture return in the um expanding warm sector but that's not going to really happen until really much later so there's going to be more of an overnight threat or like kind of like a b evening and then overnight threat not like an afternoon and evening threat it's going to be more like towards specifically the overnight hour so by zero z there you should see some more moisture coming in as well maybe mainly some southerly is kind of kind of parallel towards that 850 millibar but you will get a few southeasterlies as you have the mid-level cycling basically right in dfw so the best threat for any, really any hail or any wind is going to kind of remain just along that surface cycle or that uh, cyclone in general. So if we look just near DFW at this point at 0Z, zero zero, you are going to be seeing uh, a threat for um, some decent hail threats. Look at this EML. You're going to be seeing some um, actually decent mid-level lapse rates at, look at that, 7.8. So you, we are going to be seeing a pretty pretty decent hail threat however again there is going to be some cap inversion so that's going to kind of limit uh, a lot of the potential of these uh rotating updrafts so that's why it's going to kind of not remain at a big a big threat when it comes towards the tornadoes along this part of the day and look at the orientation between the one kilometer and six kilometers so that's just they're basically parallel to each other so 
again, not the best threat for tornadoes, but you do have that southeasterly and you do have that really strong veering. However, then you run back towards your, your back veer. And we do notice that some pretty strong backing along the one kilometer towards three kilometer time frame. And that's going to be zero Z. We could not go to three Z. There's your middle cyclone. So we will eventually be now be watching out for this start to rise towards Oklahoma uh, with the warm sector. Uh, again, same thing. You're going to be seeing that good wind threat. You're going to be seeing basically even dew points within the temperature, the EML. So that's a pretty rather good wind threat. You are also going to be seeing some really decent, decent shear, but your low level wind feels very, very weak. So you're not going to be seeing like a huge wind threat necessarily. That's why it's kind of going to be staying for the 50% here. A little bit better orientation, but still rather weak. It's going to favor maybe a slide to screen mode, but look how elevated it's going to be. Your LCL is going to be kind of rising at this point. If you look at now towards College Station, a little bit closer to College Station, you are going to be seeing again, uh, you're going to be seeing these LCLs uh, and LFCs pretty far apart from each other. Uh, let's now go towards kind of the main area to watch out for on uh, tomorrow, and that's going to be toward the overnight hours into Friday morning. But look at this. You're going to start getting some really deep moisture return as uh, the middle of cyclone kind of moves in. You're going to be seeing a strengthening cyclone that's going to allow for possibly some veering here. So look at these dew points. You aren't going to be seeing the best necessarily uh, surface orientation, but you will be getting a lot better. Um, you won't be seeing any veer back veer. You aren't going to be seeing really any capping inversions. And as well, you will start to see uh, a lot better instability. You're talking about maybe um, maybe 1800K, possibly a little bit higher compared towards the kind of below 1000 across Texas. So you're going to be seeing a lot better instability uh, in southeast uh, Louisiana. Again, look at that 1700K. You're going to be seeing... Kind of pretty well, pretty, look how actually elevated that is. Look at your LCO, basically touching the ground at this point, as well as your LFC. So definitely a lot better of a tornado threat across the Louisiana area. And that'll continue towards, uh, again, to uh, on day three. Now I'm making its way towards Alabama and Mississippi. That tornado threat will eventually continue, and your instability will be a lot. And I mean a lot higher. And we're going to be looking at this layer cape real quick, and then we'll kind of get into a brief forecast for day six and seven. Your mixed air cape, it's not going to be the greatest across these areas uh, in Texas and uh, Oklahoma. We're talking about maybe um, maybe a thousand, but if we now go towards now the areas across the better part of the warm sector, we're talking about maybe surpassing two thousand. So that's going to be pretty good. If we look at twelve Z here, looking pretty good across kind of the areas across New Orleans, you're looking at a pretty good uh, threat here. You can kind of tell that. These photographs are a lot more enlarged. You are going to be seeing a lot stronger 850 millibar flow. You are going to be seeing a uh, stronger surface wind field here. So you are going to be seeing as well that wind threat is still pretty apparent. But definitely a pretty not shabby sounding. And you're not going to be seeing really any significant capping going on here. So definitely pretty interesting. But let's not go ahead and get into the forecast for now. Um, the day... The, the day four through eight here. So what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to move my screen like that real quick. And we're going to be looking at the 500 millibar uh, on the GFS and look at the overall threats here. So look at the wind speed at 500 millibars. So again, the days we're going to be looking at mainly, of course, if we recall, is going to be day seven, which is going to be the day seven is going to be the 22nd to the 23rd. And then the 26th is going to be 21st to the 22nd, so you're gonna be kind of seeing those back to back days. So let's just recall those days and look at the GFS real quick, really quickly here. So we look kind of towards the 21st to the 22nd. There's that really, really, there's a really, really strong trough. At this point, it's becoming negatively tilted, and then yeah, that's gonna to be towards Texas. I think your day six really, really amplified trough. We're talking about 105 knots of 500 millibars. Really pushing in. That's going to allow for a pretty uh, expansive warm sector and, and a really large uh, uh, field of straight instability on March 22nd. Really strong trough. I mean, let's look at the 800. We'll look at the 800 millibar later. But that's the 21st, 22nd, and the 22nd to the 23rd, moving into Dixie Alley, and that's a really strong trough. Let's actually look at the overall. Um, Ano Let's look at the uh, actually anomalies here and see if we can get a ensemble wind mm -hmm. comparison. Uh, so if we look at the exact dates here, 
Let's see if we can still load for us. I'm not going to look at any soundings because it's so pretty far out and I don't want to hype anything up, but look at that. There you see some pretty... You can see some pretty strong agreements between the pretty strong amplified trough developing specifically on day six and then of course carrying on to day seven. So yeah, I think I have a pretty significant severe weather event possibly developing and unfolding later next week, but uh, either way, we are watching out for a pretty active pattern of severe weather, so stay tuned and hope you guys enjoy the forecast.